Good to have you with us here on DXB today, where we are indulging in something of a sustainability special. A little doff of our caps to all things COP28 getting underway next week. Uh, but rather than looking at this big picture, we're trying to have a look at it from an individual perspective, lifestyle, how you can live a more sustainable life, and how certain industries are addressing it. So, what about architecture? What about construction? What about interior design? Who better to ask than the founder? Uh, energy and Space, uh, uh, at energy.and.space, if you'd like to get in touch with them. Valentina Chereda, who's alongside us. Valentina, thanks so much indeed for your time. Thank you very much. And it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, I mean, look, we live in a city here where construction is a constant at the moment. You cannot go anywhere without seeing something being built from the ground up or being rebuilt uh, and otherwise. There's always something going on. How much of a challenge is the, is, is the, 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 the need for sustainability when it comes to construction? Yes, so the challenge is very big, as you said, but this is even a chance for us. It's an opportunity to do even more than what in other countries could be done because we have mm. so much construction. Um, it's important that we really take care of every single aspect of the built environment from a big scale, so from bigger projects to the level of the detail of what each of us do in our homes. Mm. Um, the construction industry is responsible for about 39% of the global um, carbon emissions and that means that also uh, this is affecting our health and our well-being because indoor air pollution is actually the cause of 50% of illnesses and diseases or at least it's the trigger if it's not the cause mm. and also uh, since the 1980s I would say asthma um, chemically sensitive people, allergies, they have doubled, especially in kids. So there is a big, big need for making changes now as soon as possible uh, in the way we build and we design as well. And that's the thing, I mean, this is what we were just saying to Anthea and as well to Nadia, the previous guest, is like, what then can be done? Because obviously we've got these huge construction companies here. You know, are you able to go in and actually advise these companies to try and do things a little bit better? Tell us more about that. Yeah, so, um, well, first of all, there are, you know, different levels of intervention that needs to be adopted in the country. So at, uh, from the Dubai construction code, uh, some little changes and adjustments, mm. but also uh, architects and construction companies. So what we do on a daily basis is we help people and companies to create environments that are healthier and more sustainable. Mm -hmm. So that is done from, first of all, the planning and the strategy of the construction that is, is happening up to the very, very small details of, you know, the furniture and the specifications of the materials. And what we really do, which is, um, which is very important, is we look at the ingredients of each material, each glue and everything that goes into the building. And we uh, try to source and find out where does this come from? How was it digged from the earth? Where did it go? When you start looking at all this journey of products, it's quite um, interesting and scary at the same mm. time. Uh, so this is very, it's a very important part of our job. In the same way, like you would look at the, for example, ingredients of food in the supermarket, yeah. because you want to know what you put into your body. Um, but the thing is that people need to start focusing on the environment as well, because we absorb toxins from uh, not only the food that we eat, but from absorption through the skin, eyes, and what we breathe. So it's a very important aspect, mm. the quality of our environment. Absolutely, I mean, the fact that you touch upon air pollution. I have two young children and we removed the AC unit recently and behind it, it was all black mold. Um, in my children's bedroom, that's what they're breathing at night. What can we do as, as, as residents to try and improve the air quality in our homes? Well, so when it comes to mold, this is one of the big um, things that we help people and companies to avoid. So the first step is really for con construction companies and architects to start uh, designing buildings in a way that, you know, we need to avoid condensation, uh, which is really challenging because mm. of the climate of the UAE. But also we need to design ceilings in houses and buildings in a way that can be accessible so that people can go in and clean all of these machines that are inside our false ceilings. 
And the problem is that nowadays in the design industry, uh, the focus is on beauty, aesthetics and function. And there is very little focus on health and sustainability, even though it's something that we talk about uh, a lot in Dubai. Yeah. Um, and this is one of the main things because of the way the houses are designed to start with, then mold starts collecting into our ACs, our services, and it comes into our air and that's where we get all the sicknesses. Mm -hmm. So the first thing to do is each homeowner or each person in Dubai should really have their AC cleaned every year, uh, minimum, all the Fankel units, all the SIDACs. And that's challenging because many of these things are not accessible in our houses. Mm. So you need to cut the ceilings and go to a lot of construction. Mm. So really we need to look at the root cause of the, of the problem and start designing and building in a sustainable and healthier way mm. to avoid this. Mm. AC and mattress. Uh, I've been told that yes. you have to clean your mattress as well. <laughs> um, um, Valentina, when I was going through your website, there was an entire article dedicated towards feng shui, which is a subject yeah. that uh, fascinates me a lot. I don't know a lot, but I've heard a few tips from experts in the past not to have cactus plant inside the house. Uh, the, the, your fire and water body should be in certain areas, not to have a mirror or a reflective surface in, in front of your bed, in your bedroom. So yeah. many different tips. And I understand that every home and the energy flow inside every home is quite different and unique. But what would you say are some of the universal tips when it comes to having a more positive flow of energy in your living space? Well, again, it all goes back to uh, good planning. So when it comes to classical Feng Shui, which is what we practice, it's really all about how you place the building and all the spaces within the context and the environment. So this is something that could be implemented and should be implemented from the very beginning of the planning stage. If that's not possible, then some of the things you mentioned, like you know, mirrors, for example, create a very active energy because mm -hmm. they reflect, uh, they reflect energy, they reflect electromagnetic fields. You know, all the technology and wireless and Bluetooth mm -hmm. that we have in our homes. Um, so we don't want to have big mirrors and a lot of glass surfaces in our bedrooms, for example, because of this reason. Um, about the cactuses, I have to say it's more of a myth because <laughs> so there is a lot of yeah, myth and misconception, but uh, cactuses are, are great plants, mm -hmm. especially in a, in a climate like Dubai where there is little rain, we should uh, use them as long as they're native plants. Um, and yeah, and Feng Shui is really all about harmonizing the building with the residents, with the people that live in it and with the environment. Mm -hmm. So when we do the audits, we look at five to 10 kilometers uh, surrounding the, the property that we are designing. That's fascinating. So that's part of really uh, ancient sciences because what we do, with, we specialize in health and well-being and sustainability, and we integrate ancient uh, sciences with contemporary uh, sciences as well. Fantastic. Valentina, thank you so much for coming on the show. We've definitely thank learned you. a lot of new things today and please come back anytime. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. All right, Katie, are you ready for DXB in 60 with Anthea? I mean, I'm ready for the DXB in 60. It's whether Anthea is ready for it. Listen, Anthea, we've, well, learned, we've learned about the magazine. We've learned about all the sustainability. Now it's time to learn more about you. So oh. quick fire questions, 60 seconds to find out as much about Anthea Ayash as possible. Are you ready? I am as ready as I'm ever going to be. That's the, that's the right answer, right? We'll have 60 seconds on the clock starting in three, two, one. If you weren't a journalist or, of course, the founder of The Ethicalist, which industry would you work in? Photography. Oh, like a, you want to get a good jellyfish <laughs> picture. Not underwater. What's the one thing you cannot live without? My children. Ah. Oh. I guess you have to say that. <laughs> what is your motto in life and in work? My motto in work is change attitudes one day, one person, one article at a time. Have you got a life motto besides that one? Be kind. Oh, I like that. Do you have a hidden gem right here in Dubai? My husband. He's a hidden gem. <laughs> Would you keep him in a closet somewhere? Um, who is your inspiration or your muse? And don't say Tom. Oh, I would have to say Jane Goodall. Oh, nice. OK, do you have a book that you're reading at the moment you want to recommend? <laughs> oh, nice plug. <laughs> what about a uh, podcast recommendation? Oh, I'm listening to the Zoe podcast at the moment all about um, gut health. Oh, nice. OK, lovely. <laughs> and last question, why Dubai? 
I've lived here for the last 14 years. It's my home. I love it. And that is the perfect answer. We have found amazing things out today. <laughs> Back to you, Ash. This has been a lot of fun, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us today, especially you, Anthea, for being our guest co-host. Thank you. Thank you. After the break, we find out who Ferris met at the region's largest sustainability and clean energy tech exhibition, Wetex. The founder of Bar Effect, Nora, joins us in studio to get our 3030 done right. Stick with us.